just took on a new client for YouTube. We basically nice. 10X his views, absolutely destroying it. And I, I was telling him like, listen, we, uh, I mean, yeah, baby, DJ yeah. Fonzie here <laughs> co clearly coming on time with the sound. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not using AI in your daily life now, you're not going to be relevant within the next five years. I started using AI. I quit my day job three months later. <laughs> my beef with AI is when people outsource their thinking. AI is going to create a pretty significant skill gap. How can I use AI to cut out some of that redundant, unnecessary thinking? What are some of the like maybe top one or top two questions that you encounter every single day? How can the expert differentiate themselves? The entire market has been saturated with postable clips. We cannot just have postable clips. How do we elevate that to the next level. So people are like, wow, that's different. The entrepreneur, we're always thinking about scale. How do I scale this up, scale this up, scale this up? The problem with scale is... Guys, welcome back to Content is Profit. Today we have a very special guest. We connected with him thanks to Seth, also an expert in the industry and uh, and dear friend. And it was so intriguing the conversation because he's building these incredible uh, podcast systems. He is in the same industry on the production side as us, and he's like, I have this massive, incredible newsletter about AI, and maybe, maybe. He was able to turn Francie into an AI lover. <laughs> no, no. But it was very insightful. If you have thought about using AI in some of your processes to free your time, increase your revenue, learn from today's guest. Yes. And also, if you want to know his strategy to build status with his Instagram, it's something that really surprised me how he grew it, right? He grew it from like 300 views per reel to... 10, 20, 30, he even has one with like 150,000 views consistently. I went ahead and asked him, how did you do this? And he went on and share his process. Very, very insightful. Maybe a strategy that we might adopt here on. A hundred percent. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode and uh, here we go. No music, no music today. Was dr driving right in, bro. He didn't listen. <laughs> I know. I like the music sometimes, you know. Mark, welcome to the show, man. I'm stoked. Uh, we connected this week. And uh, Fonzie is finding out about you today, man. What's going on? Your targeting is not on point. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> he likes throwing people under the bus. He can tell, Mark. But I've been looking at all your stuff and I'm impressed, to say the least. You know, you are extremely knowledgeable in AI podcasting. Your social media is on point, right? Lots, lots of traffic that goes through there. And I'm very curious to dive into your whole platform, right? Like how are you doing this and how are you growing your own NJC, your own business, your new newsletter that you're very proud of and very invested in, right? So to start, why don't we dive in a little bit into what you have built so far as your business, right? What is it that you do and you know, how can you help the person that is listening right now? Sure. Well, you know, it, it all starts when uh, I I was working a insurance job that I hated. I graduated from college. I got into an insurance, hated it every, every minute of it. Woke up every morning staring at the ceiling like, why do I have to go to the offices? Terrible. I was getting, you know, the, by the way, mad respect and love to all the insurance people out there because- <laughs> Your entire life is getting yelled at because the premium went up or the claim was denied or I don't like your face or whatever it is. Uh, so I'm much, I'm much more confident in having a lot more fun in this content creation world um, because I was like, Joanna, my wife, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to start something else. I tried all these different business ideas, yeah. eventually fell in love with creating content, with creating video, mm. creating podcasts, with the connections I was building and people started buying from me. People started paying me for the, for my services. And, uh, then one day a few, uh, you know, about two years into that side hustle, I started using AI. I lost a key team member, started using AI, quit my day job three months later because AI just really exploded the productivity of from myself and my team. Yeah. And, uh, I haven't looked back right now. Uh, we're helping to produce quite a few shows, uh, podcasts. We're doing a lot of media. We love YouTube in my agency. There's something about YouTube mm. that's just amazing. Yep. And, um, you know, just really leveraging AI to kind of power a lot of these engines. Yeah. I love that. So just for those listening right now, step one 
get a job with lots of rejection <laughs> and people insulting you. So get th you get thick skin when you get into this content game, you know, haters do that, nothing to you. That's what you did not do. Just saying. That's what I did not do. He did. He went on a sales <laughs> job, you know, I, get I was, all that rejection. I was selling gym memberships for like three years. <laughs> so I, I yep. did get a ton of no's. I hid so, behind the computer, so. you know, my dream was to sell a lot of stuff without showing my face but guess what you gotta talk to people and you gotta shake hands it's part of the process regardless you're working online or not yeah. so you mentioned obviously ai huge topic right big big leverage on your business how can people start using it inside of their business right like what are some of the maybe first processes that you can delegate if you want to put it that way to ai so people can free some more of their time and you know, after they free their time, where do they put their attention? Do they put their attention into, you know, gener uh, revenue generating activities? Do they put their attention into, you know, X, Y, and Z? I'm, I'm extremely curious. And what was that process for you? Well, it's a big question. And so we could kind of go into like what AI is great at, what AI is, is not so good at, what AI, where it really excels. Mm -hmm. But I think at first stance, what you need to do is you need to look for what are the problems that I have within my company. And I know when I started, I was almost forced into AI because I lost a team, a key team member who was doing a lot of copywriting for me, mm. writing emails, blogs, things like that. He left. He said, Mark, I'm going to Spain. I'm going to university. I'm living my best life. <laughs> See you later. And I was like, Oh crap, put up a job <laughs> listing, couldn't find anyone. So I started doing the work myself yeah. and I was like, this is taking forever. Yeah. This is just taking me so much time, so much effort. And I, and then I stumbled across this AI program that would help with this copywriting and biz bros immediately. I saved 90% of my time. I was using AI to generate tons of copy. I would go in on the back end and optimize it and clean it up. And I'm like, this is amazing. I just, I just took something that used to take an hour and now it takes five to 10 minutes. Yeah. This is nuts. And I was hooked. I yeah. trained my team member on it. I started looking for all sorts of different uh, resources. So I think that's where it starts. It mm. starts by talking to your team, identifying tasks that take a long time or maybe tedious or very repetitive. And then say, how can I maybe automate this? Yeah. How can I reduce the amount of clicks? If it takes you yeah. 10 clicks to do something now, how can I do that in three clicks, two clicks? Maybe mm -hmm. I can automate it completely. And that's, I think, where automation and AI gets really exciting. And that's where the next big businesses are going to come from. Yeah, I think, you know, Mark, you said something really interesting, right? Obviously, you know, you know, what is like that thing that you might not be very fan of, of doing? But I think there's a step before that that I've personally experienced too. And that I think most people are not doing. People are seeing AI as like the full thing, the full shebang that's going to take, you know, your process from, you know, from, from the very beginning to the very end. So uh, an example is like we've collaborating with this AI company where, you know, it's almost like you give the raw footage and then at the very end, it gives you like the full episode, all edited, perfect with clips and copy and all this, right? This is a whole process, but inside of that whole process is a bunch of steps in between uh, what I think is happening. A lot of people are not putting enough intention and attention to those like little steps because you can mix and match tools here and there. But at the end of the day, the principles of like your own process, for example, we talked a little bit about this in our call where it's like you're designing this incredible podcast system that automates like the, you know, the whole relationship aspect of it, which is really exciting. But it's like those micro tasks that could be like from step one to step three, here we save X amount of time. And then from, I take it from step three to step six, and then maybe on step six to step nine, there's another like AI leverage that we can, that we can pull and, uh, and start improving that way. So in your specific case, right. To, you know, yours was the copywriting. Now, how have you expanded on other parts of your process where you're leveraging AI? Do you see it that way? I don't know if like I explain myself, but in our specific cases, it could be like selection of clips. It could be, you know, writing the social copy for, for it, right? At the end of the day, it's like, okay, we have a massive weekly content map. Where are the points that we can leverage, you know, between human and AI, right? So do you see it the same way or like what, what's something different that maybe you have noticed there? Yeah, I, I, I do agree. I think uh, leveraging AI to power your, your human creative uh, critical thinking is, is I think the juncture in AI that we're at right now. I don't think you're really at a place where you can just set AI free and just let it go and just do whatever and have open conversations with customers and clients and prospects and whatnot. It's going to lead to it's I, I think we'll get there. But right now we're not we're not ready. 
Uh, yeah. It's just, there's, there's too many weird things with hallucinations and context <laughs> and some issues yeah. that go on there. Yeah. Uh, although I, I could go down a rabbit hill. Meta just released their new Llama 3.1, which is based off 405 billion parameters. So you get yeah. a lot more context. Again, you can get all that news at AIUpdate.ai, which is, yeah. is where I'm, I'm handling that. Um, but let me back it up just a second. And I'll, I'll give you a, a really cool example of a way that I've used AI and automation um, to power my creative thinking and my critical thinking. So I recently had to hire a new team member. Business yeah. is growing, need to hire a new team member. So what I did is I went to a job listing and posted, hey, I'm hiring this new position. If you'd like this position, please go to this website and fill out the job request. Okay. They go and they fill this job request and it's a series of questions on a form. This is a Google form. You might use type form. You can even do this with your calendar. Yeah. So anyway, they go in the, and I got about, I don't know, three or four dozen responses on these questions. The questions were like, how well do you speak English? Um, what is a, 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 what KPIs are you looking for, for this position? How would you improve KPIs? What's an experience that you've had in the past? What's the password? Because anytime I have yeah. Team members apply. So I want to know that they're paying attention to detail. I want to make sure that they're putting in some sort of like keyword or code where they put on the original job listing. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is where AI plugs in. All those answers automatically get funneled over to chat GPT, chat GPT, which I've programmed and uh, prompted assesses all the answers, all the responses, and then spits it on the back end and gives every single application a rating from mm. one to 10. Uh, and so instead of having to go through and look at resumes and look at clips and look at examples, ChatGPT has already done that for me based on the responses. So instead of having to look at three, four, five dozen answers, I only had to look at five. Yeah. I only had to look at the eight, nines and tens. And I found, I found two really good people. I only needed one position, but I hired the other person because they were so, they were such a perfect fit. Cool. And so that's an example, I think of leveraging AI and automation, particularly within the context of forms. If people are filling out questions in forms, you can create really unique, interesting, customized responses for both you, your team and potentially prospects in some different ways. Yeah. No, that's, that's really exciting. And I think, you know, uh, what, what are some of the, like the main questions that, you know, come from your newsletter on AI, right? Because I think, um, you speak to creators or you speak to business owners, you speak to like in, in that world. And I think some of those questions are, you know, navigating through the people that are listening to, to our show as well, you know, and I think on our, on our case is like, okay, look at your process, look at what are the things that you can either save some time or create a little bit more effective work, uh, for you and your team, but on your community, what are some of the, like maybe top one or top two questions that you encounter every single day? Well, I think one of the most common questions is how do I get a better response out of these chat bots? <laughs> at this point, everybody should be using chat GPT, you know, on a fairly regular basis or, you know, Cloudy or uh, Meta AI or Grok or whatever you want, you should be using one of these AI tools regularly because it helps you see blind spots, things that you haven't necessarily thought of before. It's going to see that for you. Yeah. It's going to give you an idea. Also, it's a great way to prep if you're interviewing to hire a new person. Yeah. Right. You can't be an expert in everything, but let's say I'm hiring an email marketer, for example, I might, let's say I'm not an expert email marketer and I don't know anything about email marketing and I want to hire someone. I don't know the questions to ask. Yeah. Right. You can ask the standard, like, you know, what's your biggest weakness or, <laughs> you know, th that type of thing, but that only gets you so far. But if I can get on a call and before I get on that call, I use a, a chat bot to say, these are the, these are the key performance indicators. These are reasons why people succeed. These are the things these yeah. are the specific indicators why people fail. This is useful on, you know, on these different tools. Well, then I can go and I know the right questions to ask that potential team member. And I know the, the, the uh, at least the responses. So I learned to, to talk the talk more quickly. That's cool. Um, so anyway, that's another kind of, I, I think, great way of, of helping see your blind spots. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Interesting. Mark. I am one of, I'm not going to say one of, but you are, I've been, I've been, I've been <laughs> an AI hater for a little bit. Not going to lie. You know, um, he, lo my, he loves to work slow, ineffective. No, not, at all, not at all. <laughs> my, my beef with AI is when people outsource their thinking, you know, and I agree with you when you're using it for a very specific 
tasks and, you know, processes, like I've used it that way as well. Right. And it is efficient. It does help, you know, maybe certain types of copy that, you know, doesn't require that much of your intention. Right. For example, but I feel like there's a lot of expert based businesses that they are right. Their brain, their knowledge is their product in a way. And they're outsourcing that into AI as well, right? And for me, that's, I feel like that's a little bit of a deal breaker or, you know, a little bit of a turn off when I know if somebody's just crafting everything that they're saying with AI, right? Even their idea crafting, because I understand the value of using AI to come up with multiple ideas. But for me personally, I think the, the fact that somebody can generate multiple ideas or can generate, you know, certain amount of ideas under certain circumstances is proof that they are extremely educated in a very specific topic and they have the capacity of, you know, doing those connections in their brain, right? They see something and they're immediately able to relate it to something that they're experts on. And then they're able to express that into their audience. So I'm curious, right? What is your point of view on that, right? Somebody that might be their face of, of their business on an expert-based business, right? Consultants, for example. How do you see outsourcing their thinking in a way, right? Are you against it? Are you with it? And again, this is right part of the discourse that, that, that we're having here. Or is it just as strictly used as a supportive tool. So I think it's a really valid concern, Luis. Um, and so I, I, so I think there's a few things to look at, but I think we need to start by, by at least the way I think about it is a, there's, you know, we, every, everything that we produce, everything that we produce demands resources in, in order to get the production out. Yep. Right. So, you know, maybe that's the time that the hours that I have in the day, or maybe it's the brain power that I have. We've all been to that point where it's like at three o'clock in the afternoon and our brains just like, I'm done. Mush. It's oh, time yeah. to, it's, it's time to, to watch Netflix videos. Right. <laughs> and you know, that's because your brain gets fatigued. It gets tired throughout the day, or maybe because you ran out of coffee or, or whatever the reason is, regardless at a certain point. So what I, what I'm interested in doing is, well, how can I use AI to cut out some of that redundant, unnecessary thinking? Okay. The, the flip side that I think that you you've highlighted here, Lewis, which I think is really important is that AI is going to create a pretty significant skill gap. Okay. Because what, what ends up happening here, somebody that's an absolute beginner never has even touched, let's use email marketing example, yep. never written email, never set up an account, all of a sudden they can use chat GPT. They can use AI to start developing a strategy, getting out a pretty decent email immediately with yeah. a decent strategy. They're going to, they're going to understand the value of titles. They're going to understand DMARC setup. They're going to understand hooks. They're going to understand responses and pull. They can have a pretty comprehensive yeah. understanding of the email marketing within 10 minutes. Okay. In the past, the way you develop that type of understanding is by repetition. It's by getting there and doing it and connecting the lines in your brain, like you've mentioned, right? Yeah. So, so what happens here? What you have is we have a ton of beginners who have never actually done something, but they're using AI to get to say a level five, six or seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, those people are going to start eating up a ton of the jobs and a ton of the tasks that were typically hired by the people that had put in a thousand hours to get to that point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, so now you've got this point where you've got beginners, nobody's in the middle because everyone's just using AI to outsource that work to get to level seven because level seven is good enough. Yeah. And then what happens at the top, you've got the experts and that's where we should be. That's mm -hmm. where we need to be in our roles. We need to be the experts because not only have we used AI to skill up, but we've used that thousand, 10,000, 50,000 to, hours of experience to get to that level where we can see that crazy response come in from AI, where it tells you to like, I don't know if y'all saw this Gemini, uh, was leveraging Reddit posts to give advice on, on their new Google search. Wow. So someone asked it, how do I get my pizza, uh, the cheese to stick to my pizza? And the AI recommended using glue. 
to <laughs> get the pizzas. Now, if you're not using your brain, if you're level one, if you don't, if you've never cooked a pizza before, you might say, okay, glue. All right, let's try it. But if, <laughs> if you're an expert, if you're an expert, you might say, you know what? Maybe AI has got something wrong here. Yeah, Maybe it's, it's hallucinating. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. It's, it's tripping. And there's going to be a lot of that. So yeah. I, I think that's an interesting point. We use AI to enhance our level 10 skills yep. um, and make us extremely competent. But if we, if we throw out critical thinking, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be the doom of your business. Cause then you're, you're competing with all the level ones. You're not competing with all the level tens, which yeah. is where you want to be. Yeah. I think that also creates some sort of ripple effect into pricing, right? Cause then maybe level five, six, seven that are just using AI to, you know, develop their product and their outputs, they're going to be able to do it faster. Right. And then maybe more volume, they're going to say, well, we can charge a little bit less right to the market to undercut some people. And then it's going to be a race to the bottom. So on that topic, right. How can the expert differentiate themselves? Right. And still, I'm, I'm, I'm not putting away that the expert do not use AI at all. Right. Again, we, we've, or, I think already established that AI is a great tool for multiple, you know, multiple things that we have to do inside of our business, but how in your eyes that expert can differentiate themselves from the level five, six and seven, right? So we, again, so they can set up themselves to, to win. Is it, you know, positioning? Is it uh, the audience that they're talking to, the type of clients that they're looking for? What is it in your mind that is, you know, can cause a differentiation and, you know, build a sustainable expert-based business? You know, I heard Alex Hormozzi talking about this topic the other day. And, you know, as a, as a entrepreneur, we're always thinking about scale. How do I scale this up, scale this up, scale this up? And, I think that's important. I think systems are important. The problem with scale is often it comes at the cost of quality. Mm -hmm. yep. It comes at the cost of quality. How can I do it bigger, faster? And, and it, at that point, you reduce quality. Um, so I, I think, and I've been talking to my team a lot about this, is we, we cannot sacrifice quality for speed. We need to double down and triple and quadruple down on quality. And I'll let's, let's, let's talk about content for a second. Yep. How many people on social media are sharing zoom clips of them and, and someone that they had an interview with on social media now. Mm. Quite a bit. I would say it's, it's completely flooded. It's yeah. completely yeah. flooded. You go back five years ago to when me and my team were just start, when I was just starting to create videos, it was much rare. It took a lot of effort to do it, mm. but now heck after a Riverside conversation is done, it's going to give us 10 to 15 clips that we can, that are just, are pretty good. Yeah. They're pretty good. They're a level five. Yeah. It's, they're, okay. they're postable. They're postable. Exactly. They're postable. <laughs> yeah. And, and what's happening is, you know, John Smith, who has his little, has it, I don't want to say little, has his AC company is just taking those and posting them. And so you, the, the entire market has been saturated with postable clips. We cannot be postable. We cannot just have postable clips. How do we elevate that to the next level? So people are like, wow, that's different. Yeah. That, that comes with the, the quality of the video camera. That comes with the quality of actually having a studio like y'all have there. That comes with creating contextual B-roll. It comes with double checking the subtitles, make sure the captions are okay. It comes with making, making sure that the, the initial thumbnail on the Instagram reel is something that'll make someone stop. It, it, it comes with the copy that's at the bottom that makes someone say, Ooh, this creates curiosity, or this makes me upset. Or what did Kamala Harris say today? You know, you've got to create, it's got to be more than just Riverside gave me 15 clips. I got a bunch of clips from AI. Let's just go and post it and move on to my next project. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, Across the board. Yeah. Like I, I think, you know, we both move in the, in the, in the same industry, right? You guys also offer a service that's similar, right? Uh, you guys do incredible work. And uh, it's funny because like with the people that come to Sue, we've had people with conversations where uh, they flat out say, oh yeah, I can go do this in whatever software, right? I'm like, perfect. <laughs> be my guest. Go try it out because like you said, it's going to be to that level five. And I think one of the elements that on our side, or at least me personally, I think is one of the most important things is consistency, right? It's like, okay, let's say you get through that initial high of achieving 
the clips, from, like specifically on this like topic that we're talking about, those clips, those stocking head clips, how long are you going to be able to sustain that? How long are you going to be able to like still be excited about selecting the best quality message to share with the world? You know, do you have a powerful mission like yours, for example, which is to help 1 million people with the AI, right? That's a very powerful, a powerful mission that is going to keep you excited and motivated to keep sharing your message and inspire your team and inspire, you know, them to, to elevate their skills, right? And most people, I'm I there to say this, most people won't do that won't stay consistent, even if they use these tools, right? So I wanna, uh, I, I, that's my belief, because we, we've seen it in, in a few cases with people that come here through the studio. So think other people like you or us that we take on that mission to, to help them with their message in that sense. And you just broke down how we, we cannot just be possible, like you said, like there's other elements that we have to start considering, right? And elevating our skills as a creator, as an entrepreneur, as a, as a message to be different in this online world that we have today, right? And, uh, and I think, you know, from day one, we started with Facebook Lives, the lowest friction possible ever, right? It was just like, well, share a story and we, it's, it's published on live. That's it, that was a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and we're like, quality of the message over quality of the production, 100% of the time. And then we can start adding these things. We can start adding team members and we can start adding AI and these tools. And you create your own system at the end of the day that will help you stay consistent, right? Right now you've been publishing for how long? Five, six, seven years, right? It's been pretty yeah, consistent. Just about, yeah, just about five years. I mean, over a thousand, uh, well over a thousand YouTube videos on my primary yeah. channel. We've got over a million views on that. So yeah, yeah. and consistency, well, it's interesting too, right? Because consistency and making sure that someone's consistent with their production week over week, month over month, year over year, that's really how my business started. Right. Yeah. You know, but, and, and again, I think this is where AI plays a really important role in business owners considering where, you know, where AI is, is, should be used because AI is, is going to, it saves so much time that being consistent is becoming easier and easier and easier because of these tools. Yeah. Because these tools. So in every, in every single industry, every single company, we need to be thinking about, okay, how can we leverage the AI to be consistent and to have speed, but also elevate our services so that we're not competing. We're not competing against the beginners. We're, we're in a different category. Like you said, say, Oh, you want to go do it by yourself? Mazel tov. Love it. Yeah. We show I, you the you process. Know, Here it is. <laughs> like exactly. Almost. Yeah. All right, I'm going to, but we need to be at a different level saying, okay, you're not getting any views versus if we just put, if we, when we institute like some B roll of Maximus Decimus Meridius, the ultimate gladiator <laughs> uh, fighting off the emperor, that's going to get someone to watch for three seconds longer. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's the way I think we need to be thinking. Oh, 100%. Yeah. The contextual B rolls are a must, right? And I feel like, yeah, it's not there yet. Um, I want to transition here a little bit. That's okay. AI. Absolutely amazing. Sign up to the newsletter. Wait, now is that, that 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 was it? You're not a hater anymore? No. Um <laughs> and, you know, I'm I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna subscribe to, yeah, to the we, I'm we gonna subscribe it. to the the <laughs> list, you know, the newsletter AI update dot AI. Go subscribe right now. I'm gonna subscribe, you know, and I'm I'm gonna give Mark an opportunity to turn me from hater to <laughs> I won't say lover, but you know, something positive in regards to AI. I do want to dive a little bit into, of course, content is profit, right? And I'm curious, I'm seeing your social media here, right? You have your Instagram has a lot, a lot. It, it seems that it pulls a lot of views, right? I'm not sure how much traffic exactly is it also direct into your offers or whatnot, or how many conversations is it starting for you. I went down all the way to like March, 2023, and I can see that there's a big jump on on views that you had kind of like a couple hundreds and then it exploded. So I'm very curious to see strategy wise, how did you grow that, right? Is it organic? Are you doing paid? But I'm also lo looking at the consistency that you have on YouTube, right? Absolutely amazing. You publish a lot, create a lot of videos. Obviously you have your podcast as well that you publish in there. So overall, the, the main question is how is your content tied to the profits of your business, right? What is that source? Are you pulling source of traffic and conversations through all these channels or are you attaching 
your profit mainly to, let's say, the conversations that you're starting in the podcast. We're pretty open with that. We've said multiple times here in Content is Profit, that is the main way we actually have built our business, is the relationships that we manage to create here on the podcast. They end up, a lot of them, some of them, right, creating opportunities, having those conversations. I'm very curious, out of all these assets that you have built, right, what is driving profit into your business? Well, there, so there, there's a couple things. Um, and I will say that one of the most important things, something I'm starting to really get more serious about is being able to track and attribute traffic. Where's the traffic coming from? Yep. You know, and that was, I think, again, one of the, I don't want to call it a mistake, but when I was first starting out, how do we put all these systems in place so we can be consistent, so we can crank out all the content. Mm -hmm. But now we got it. Now me and my team are thinking about, okay, why the hell are we even doing this? Why are we even making the content? And the reality is, like you said, we want to generate income for our clients. And so making sure that, you know, for example, I just took on a new client for YouTube. We basically 10 X his views, 10 X, all of his, awesome. um, you know, 10, you know, his subscribers are, are up 10, 10 times since last month. So we're just absolutely destroying it. And I, I was talking to him like, listen, we, I mean, yeah, baby, DJ yeah. Fonzie here <laughs> co clearly coming on time with the sound. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mark, keep going. Just, again, <laughs> one of the reasons I love YouTube, by the way, it, it, well, we can talk about YouTube here in a minute, but um, we, we need to create trackable links. We need to know where the traffic's coming from. If no traffic is coming from Instagram, what's going on with Instagram? If no traffic is coming from here, when it, what's going on there and how can we fix it? That's also part of the advantage of working with an agency too, is you've got someone who's not just working on their own project, but they're working on multiple projects so they can start to see trends and, and things of that nature. So um, I, I think that's a big deal. You know, for me personally, I think that the, the best, income generator for me has been, uh, my podcast, hmm. uh, most basically every client that I have has either, um, been a guest on my podcast and decided yeah. to become a client or they just, they keep seeing my content pop up day after day after day. And they're eventually they'll, and this is, so this is another unique problem. I recently, not recently, about three months, four months ago, I brought on a new client who said, Mark, I've been following you for two and a half years. Hmm. Now I'm ready for my podcast. Wow. I've been watching your posts on LinkedIn every, every day. Now I'm ready. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, how can we get that from two and a half years to like two and a half months? <laughs> right. Yeah. To two weeks. <laughs> yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember a very specific graphic. I think it was a Frank Kern video where he has like piles of rice. Right. And he has like this massive pile of rice on one side, a medium one, and then a little one. Right. He goes, Hey, this massive pile of rice right here. This is, you know, your customers, you know, a year from now. Uh, it, like uh, a year, a, a year away from you. Then this middle one is about, you know, four months away from you. And then this little one here, this is the people that are ready to buy today. Right. And mm -hmm. almost with the message of, you know, we need to start educating our people or bridging the gap between that decision making, you know, and helping them through that journey. But uh, like you said, like that person two years ago wasn't that big pile, right? And then, you know, not so long ago, it, it moved all the way down to to that. So uh, for those that have not started to create consistently, you know, uh, please start. <laughs> start leveraging, right? Like go check out the newsletters, go check out, you know, Mark's podcast. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying this and, and you know, you follow what we say. A lot of the message, uh, we resonate so much because it's very, it's very similar. And, and I love that question that you said, it's like, how can we reduce that time for from those two years to that. So hmm. have you guys started exploring that? Like, have you guys tried something new in your content that you've seen that is working for you on that side? Yeah. So it's specifically in the realm of podcasting. I really think it comes down to creating a great system for turning guests into clients. I think this is the, the, the fastest way to monetize a show. I, I really do. And I've been doing this for over five years now. Yep. Um, and I, so one of the things that was interesting, I recently reached out to all of my, my clients and said, Hey y'all just wondering, how are you following up with guests after they've been on your show? Are you sending them an email? Do you know how many of them were sending out emails to their guests? Zero, Zero. not one. Yeah. None of them were sending out any. So I'm thinking like we're spending all this time, all this money to get the guest on the show and then nothing is happening. Yeah. That is a, it's a complete breakdown. So I, I went to all of them and said, listen, all of you listen up. If you're interested for free, including your service, I will, I will do 
I will send a series of four to five emails to all of your guests after they're on to A, help promote the podcast and B, try to nurture them into scheduling a sales call with you. Yep. And just last month, one of my clients was sending me this message. He's like, Mark, Tony, I can't remember his name. Tony, uh, Tony just scheduled a call with me. This is amazing. Thank you. And it's like, that's, I think something that we, yeah. we could really leverage. And it was as simple as this. Once the podcast episode is complete, once my team has completely processed the whole podcast, uh, that team member who does the finalization fills out a form with stuff like, you know, here's a link to the blog. Here's a link to the YouTube. Here's a link to the podcast. Here's a link to the calendar, you know, all the various specific information. And then that sets off an automation sequence that goes to that guest to, to nurture the campaign. And then we yeah. go on the, in on the back end and we just review the stats, see what's being opened, what's being clicked, what's not. And we tweak accordingly. That's so cool. I remember when we first started, you know, the show, the first uh, heavily on the first hundred episodes, we put it a lot of intention into the relationship of it. And, and, you know, throughout the last four years, we've gone better. We've stepped back a little bit, depending on like, if we have like a solo episode type of face or we can definitely do a lot better. Uh, but I remember it was a mix of, Hey, you know, thank you for coming to the show right after the interview to then a couple of days in like, Hey, I really enjoyed that conversation through a text message, right. Or, or a selfie. And then a week later was the email with the release of the episode. And, and that just really, really helps specifically if, if you're like in the industry that, you know, that, that we live in, let's say you go to a live event, then we will see a lot of our guests there. And it was like, like you know, almost like a reunion and, and it was incredible. And, you know, we met him through the show and then we just continue conversations like that. And in our case was not super focused on, on sales. It was more like, Hey, let's collaborate at some point. Right. And most of those turn into incredible opportunities for us that allow us to, to grow. So like you said, I think we're on the same page. Uh, podcasting is, a superpower in the, like having a, a, a podcast, like you mentioned, the way that you use it is a superpower in this world. And it's going to speed up your, your progress specifically to like probably bigger opportunities than just selling to an audience that might take two years to get to know you and trust you to be able to click that buy button for a low ticket item. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think it's super valuable and thank you for, for bringing that up. And, uh, you know, we encourage people to, to go connect. We're going to put all your links right below. So you got to do scroll down a bit and, and connect with Mark. And if, if you want our help, uh, we're happy to, to support as well. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm curious, Mark, about your Instagram and your thoughts on podcast clips. We actually just did an episode on that, right? What, what are our thoughts on podcast clips? We see, like you mentioned, right? Now there's so many, and again, you can add value in many different ways, you know, try to get creative there. But obviously you have your clips have good, very good amount of views, right? Like 10,000, 12,000, like there's some that are in like 20, even 50,000, right? You also have different sorts of content, right? Like different segments, your reaction videos, we we're talking about them. Those are absolutely amazing. I'm sure there's some strategy kind of like top of funnel that maybe you can attract some people top of funnel, get them interested, maybe redirect them into your podcast. But I feel like for podcasters, and I, I, I would say that your Instagram is mainly a podcaster first Instagram, at least that is the first impression that it gives me. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, like for podcasters, it's very challenging to grow their Instagram based on clips, right? Uh, hey, I don't have too much time. Like I want to, obviously the effort that I'm putting in already with the podcast, leverage that, create clips, put them out there, you know, be famous, turn me into Joe Rogan, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, you, I, I feel like you've but been one of Joe, the few that have done it very yeah. successful that I, I've I want to clarify, here. Joe Rogan was already huge before he started clipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe, no, it's that, a joke, it's a joke. I know, it's not for you. It's for <laughs> maybe some people that tune in now and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this because whatever. Yeah. Um, it requires a lot of consistency and, uh, and frequency just and, saying. and hard work. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious, right. On, on how do you see the role of Instagram? And maybe one of the things that you and your team notice is that, yeah, we got some, some of these good numbers, but it's actually maybe not, you know, helping that much to the bottom line. And we're going to put more of our focus back into podcasting. Yeah. Well, so I don't see 
social media clips is a way to grow your podcast. I see your podcast is a way to grow your social media, mm. right? Because it is extremely hard to drive traffic from a, uh, like a social media clip to a podcast. It's, it's, all, it's, it's basically impossible. Yeah. I'll just put it that way. It's basically impossible. Um, but what the podcast allows us to do and like we talked about is to create tons and tons of content for social media. We've already covered why it's important to yep. take it, you know, not just clip it and post, you've got to take it kind of a step further. Yep. Um, you know, Instagram's a funny one because I'm honestly, I'm very lazy on Instagram. <laughs> I'm very lazy. I almost never open Instagram. Yeah. Um, that must be good for your we, mental health. Just going to say <laughs> it has almost honestly, these days, almost all my attention is on YouTube and then maybe X. I, I like, I like X as well, mm. but I just find YouTube to be so, I, I find YouTube to be the best way to, um, reach new audience and, and also create depth because the shorts, like I had some shorts that have created hundreds of subscribers just from one short. And then that subscriber watches another AI video, which it, I don't want to go way off the rails there. Um, but I will give you some specifics on how I'm getting, I, like, I think on one Instagram video, we got 150,000 views. Yeah. Um, we're doing a few different things. A, we're consistent. We're producing all the time. Um, we're, and, and, and again, we're kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall. I'm just, I just haven't been as thoughtful on the platform. Um, then we're using paid engagement, mm. paid likes, paid comments to drive engagement, to start reaching new audiences. Nice. And I'll be frank. I don't know that that's the best way to do it. It's something yeah. that I've been experimenting with. And I think it's, there's pros and cons to it. We could have a whole discussion on that in and of itself. Um, but the, the goal with that was, you know, I don't know that you can actually play fair on Instagram anymore when it comes yeah. to podcast clips. Yeah. I think you need to be doing something different because like we said before, there's so many people posting yeah. so many clips all the time. It, it just gets drowned out. So yes. yeah. um, um, that was kind of my stance behind paid engagement to yeah. boost reach. No, I love it. I, I, and I love that you share that because a lot of people, of course, they're like, oh, I'm going to go here and do it organically and post. And I was well, probably going to take a whole lot of time. Right. Yeah. Like, and you might not even reach in that whole lot of time, the level that you would like, like to. Right. Yeah. So I, I, we believe too, in, in page, paid engagement and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm glad you actually shared about that. Right. Cause it's, um, eye opening for many people that are like, wow, maybe I do need to put some budget and get my image out there. I think one of the advantages is the fact that it creates a lot of status, I will say, right? Whether that engagement comes good or, you know, negative, positive engagement or actually neutral, like neutral in sense of revenue opportunities for your business. I think it does create a great perspective for somebody that comes and visit your Instagram that says, wow, Look at that. Mark is, is pretty good. Like look at all these people that are engaging or watching his videos and all that stuff. Right. So yep. for, like you said, I'm using podcasting to get social media followers rather than the other way around. I think it's a benefit because somebody that hears you on a podcast and they're like, Oh, let me find out this guy. And then they go to your profile. The first thing that says to them is status. Mark has status. Look at that proof of concept right there. Yeah. Like he has a following. He's consistent, right? He He's pulling a lot of views. And obviously their mind are not going to be like, hmm, how is he doing this? Like we think like that because we're in the business, right? We're, we're trying to obviously grow accounts and all that stuff. But for them, somebody that looks at this, that's the proof of concept. And if it's somebody that's also interested in working with you, it's probably that little nudge that they need to, you know, book a call with you and, you know, give you guys an opportunity. Yeah, I think, Mark, you mentioned a couple of things right now on that, obviously, a very you know, cool example and case study of what people can start doing. And it doesn't have to be a big budget, right? I think, you know, we, we started a, a football show not so long ago. I think the first wave we've, we, we've on a break after five episodes. <laughs> uh, we need to get this guy in the studio. He's been traveling like crazy. <laughs> and uh, I remember we're like, okay, we've never really been on TikTok except just like posting for, for the, for the podcast or content's profit, just that. And it's almost like the app is not even on my phone. That's how crazy it is. We just put the clips out there and see what happens. Now with a football show, I wanted to really test 
uh, see what happened like with the clips right from the from the get go. So we publish about six to nine clips completely organically. See what happened. It, they got some traction because we leveraged the Cup America, we leveraged the World Cup, things that were happening in that mm. world, right? So people were having uh, they were attaching to to the conversation, and then I'm like, let me let me put in some money behind some of these clips. And I think specifically one clip was about 20 bucks. The other clip was about 10. And immediately that account blew up. It went from like zero to to like 50 followers within a couple hours, right? And you're like, huh, very interesting indicator, right? And like you say, it's like, yeah, throwing spaghetti on the wall wall mixed with something that I really like and enjoy or the type of content that you really like uh, to create, for example, mixed with a spice of paid what happens? Well, you start seeing some data that's really interesting. I mean, like, well, what's this doing? Is this driving some traffic? Is this driving engagement? Like, do people react better to this type of content versus the other type of content? So now you start collecting data in a faster pace. And again, it doesn't have to be a massive budget. And I think more more people have to start paying attention to that. And, uh, you know, just yesterday we had a, a conversation with uh, people here in the studio that we just ran uh, we just ran a test of clips that they were not doing clips of a political show. Right. And, uh, we're like, this is very polarizing content that we can just put out there and see what happens because you know, the, the opinions just divided, especially, you know, this time of year and it got really good results. The channel traffic went through the roof, but guess what? When we had the meeting of checking and they actually saw the clips, which are things that they said that came out of their mouth that are already published on the long form content they got super scared and they asked for those clips to be pulled down. So now it's mm. like, what's the, what's the issue there, right? Like where we need to be willing to test these things out. And if it comes out of our mouth, right? And it's approved for final publishing, we should be okay by putting that out. So it's also a thing, a matter of like personal, almost like uh, inner growth when- I think, well, I think this is a flawed mindset because- hundred percent. That mindset to me says, nobody's going to listen to my podcast anyway, so I don't care what I say. A hundred percent. I'm with you. I, I, you you have no idea how incredibly frustrated I was uh, after that conversation mm-hmm. because I'm like, this has the potential to like, first, reach more people. Second, probably help and attract the people that you want to attract in whatever platform that you're on, right? And I think that has to be a lesson for a lot of people listening. It's like, we should put that aside, right? If we are going to publish, we need to be okay with sharing as much as possible of our message because it's our duty to help the, the people that we're trying to talk to. So anyways, we could go on a rant courage, on this. <laughs> courage, courage is rewarded. Courage is rewarded. You need to, and quite frankly, if you're not saying something that is upsetting some people, you're probably not saying anything that interesting. I had James Altucher on my show. So nice. cool. And I asked him in 2020, he wrote uh, an article um, in, I think it was the New York times, but in a, in a big magazine um, entitled New York is dead. Everyone's leaving New York. It's dead. And he got a lot. People were not happy. People did not like that. He wrote that. And I asked him, do you regret writing that? And he said, Mark, when I write an article, if I'm not worried what people will think, I don't write it. I don't publish it. And I was like, wow, you, you need standard. Yeah. And, and and to be fair, that might be a cause of a lot of the problems that we have today because everyone's just trying to piss everybody off. Um, so I think there's a balance, but you need it, when it when it comes to talking and and creating compelling content, you need you need to be able you need to be able to get a rise out of people's emotions. Yeah, there needs to be a rise of emotions. A hundred percent. Dude, I, I think we could be talking about content 24. We, we might have to do a part two at some point. I know that you live close by. We might have to drive to you and do it there on location. We, I don't know. I know that you're coming to, you know, the city of the parks soon. <laughs> so we might have to like meet you there. But Mark, this has been incredible. Um, I really appreciate you coming on, man, and sharing the, this message. I think it's going to excite a lot of people. It's going to motivate a lot of people to to if they're not using AI and leveraging in the right way, they're going to connect with you. Uh, Again, we're going to put all the links right below. Uh, Is there anything else that you want to share before we head out? I mean, we, we talked on a lot of topics. I would just say, you know, if, if you're not using AI in your daily life now, you are, you're not going to be relevant within the next five years. It's now is the time to start, start experimenting. It's, it, it, it really does change everything. I started using AI. I quit my day job three months later. Hmm. Um, I'm, you know, every time my, I talk to my team, I, 
I every literally every time I say, listen, if there's a new tool that you want to try out, let me know. We'll test it out. Do you like it? Let's test it out. My newsletter, people respond by, hey, Mark, have you tried this tool? I'm like, nope, but I'm gonna. Yeah. That sounds awesome. <laughs> um, because the reality is you're not going to know what works and what doesn't work. There's a lot of tools out there that don't work. There's a lot of uh, AI strategies, I think, that, that don't work. They're not ready for prime time. And so yeah. if you're not in it, if you're not testing it, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to be first. And, um, the world's changing. It's, it's, I think it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's incredibly important. That's why I'm glad that my mission to help 1 million people thrive with AI just got a little bit smaller because now we got Lewis on board. Now it's 999,999. Yes, let's go. Let's go. I'm let's go. glad I could help in there. <laughs> From hater to lover. What's it like? Uh, From hater, hater to, to lover. lover. <laughs> we need to make a cool edit on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy, is there anything you want to add before we head out? Uh, just grateful, man, Marcus. Thank you so much. I know we threw some, uh, I feel like, hard questions at you. And you Wait, who, took him like a chance. What? Who's standards? Marcus is like, no, man, that was easy. Yeah, you asked the, ask the easy questions, you know? <laughs> Somebody has to carry this podcast, and it's okay, guys. I'll do it. I'll do it for the team. Pick a bro. You know where to vote. Pick a bro. <laughs> but, Marcus, no, it was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll have you back in here, you know, for some updates on AI, the newsletter. Maybe we can do a newsletter specific podcast, right? We're very interested in the newsletter word world. Actually, one of the best performing episodes we've had in Contents Profit is about newsletters. So, mm. you know, and maybe in a couple months we can bring you back to get an update on on yours, how it's growing, how you're growing it. You know, maybe some of the results you've seen. Yeah, I'm. I'm into it. I think email is, is, is probably one of the hardest things to do. Everything is hard. Yeah, everything is, yeah. everything is simple, but it's hard at the same time. So anyway, yep. love, love. Thanks for bringing me on guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, with that said, thank you so much for tuning to the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at BizBrosCo. That is right. If Mark here turn you in from hater to lover of AI, please don't forget to share this episode. And of course, don't forget to leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.